My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The scriptures often stupefy me. Just when I think I get what God is all about, a phrase or a passage of scripture will leave me dumbfounded. Today we have one such text, the story of Jesus with a Syrophoenician woman. It is a difficult text. This is not a story of a kind and gentle Jesus, but a Jesus who is cruel and harsh. Confronted by a woman desperate for her daughter's healing, Jesus dismisses her and regards her as less than a dog. Ironically, the scripture, the story, is paired with a passage from a letter of James, a text that makes emphatically clear our need to attend to those who suffer want and need. The message we hear from James stands in striking contrast to Jesus' actions. It's almost as if the compilers of the lectionary, the book of readings for liturgy, wanted to make a point of Jesus' insulting behavior. On the one hand, we have James challenging our inconsistent behavior with a question. If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and you do not supply their bodily needs, what good is that? On the other hand, we have Jesus doing precisely what James tells his readers not to do. Jesus denies the woman's request. Not only that, but Jesus shows complete disregard for the Gentiles. Needless to say, this is a baffling gospel story. How do we reconcile our theology of a God who has love and compassion for all with a Jesus who insults and ignores a desperate woman in need? As I pondered this question this week, I turned to several commentaries on this story from Mark's Gospel. Whether or intentional or not, most commentators either gloss over Jesus' callous behavior or interpret the story in such a way that makes Jesus' actions seem misunderstood. Some even go so far as to make excuses for Jesus. He was tired in a foreign land, or he was simply a good Jewish rabbi who couldn't interact with an unclean Gentile woman. Yet all of these explanations fail to fully name the offensiveness of Jesus' words. It's as if we domesticated Jesus so much to our personal liking that we don't want to wrestle with the Jesus we find in the Gospels, who often shocks and unsettles us. Yet I think we need to wrestle with a Jesus we don't always like. Maybe the things about Jesus that make us uncomfortable reveal our own struggles with living a life of love and compassion for all God's people. As much as we say we love and care for all people, we often fall short of that virtue and find that it is more easily said than done. And I'm not simply talking about the poor and the marginalized, but also with those persons with whom we may disagree or find hard to listen to because we don't always share the same values or beliefs. I think the story of Jesus and the Syrophoenician woman forces us to deeply reflect and consider our own living of the great commandment, you should love your neighbor as yourself. 
Before we do, let us return for a moment to the story of Jesus and the woman. While I have no intent and, quite frankly, no desire to interpret or explain Jesus' actions, I do think this is an opportunity to consider how his actions might actually help us understand who Jesus was. I also think it's an opportunity to recognize how extraordinary the Syrophoenician woman was. While most of us would recoil and be deeply wounded if Jesus responded to our knees in the same way as he did to hers, The woman does not relent. Rather, she not only persists in seeking healing and life for her daughter, she also challenges Jesus to see others as God sees them, not as humans see them. Now, this latter point may be unsettling to us, The classic Christian theology of Jesus as human and divine is so ingrained in our memories that it seems inconceivable to suggest that Jesus had struggles and challenges like us. Yet we can't forget that Jesus was human and divine. He fully lived as one of us felt feelings as we do, and wrestled with the deeper questions of life. And Mark seems to get that in his gospel. Unlike the gospel writer John, Mark portrays Jesus as not having everything figured out from the beginning of the story. Rather, Jesus seems to grow deeper into a deeper understanding of himself and his ministry In Mark's gospel, thus Mark's story of Jesus and the Syrophoenician woman offers us a glimpse into Jesus' growing understanding of himself and his mission. Challenged and confronted by the woman's wit and wisdom, Jesus appears to have a transformation of heart. Moved by her tireless love and devotion to her daughter, Jesus eventually heals the child and one might say comes to understand his mission to all God's people and not just to the community into which he was born. Understood as such, I think the story is instructive to us as well. As I said earlier, I think the story of Jesus and the Syrophoenician woman challenges us to seriously consider our own need for transformation and growing awareness of our mission and ministry. For me, Jesus' encounter with a Syrophoenician woman challenges me to examine my own response to those who are different from me. Do I treat others differently because of their social status, beliefs, identity, or even racial and ethnic background? Do I fail to listen to others simply because I don't agree with their political or religious beliefs? These are important questions for us all to ask. While we may think of ourselves as accepting and welcoming to all people, A critical examination and review of our lives may surprise us and reveal times and occasions when we haven't been so inclusive as we might think ourselves to be. Do we show partiality or favoritism to some people and not love for all? This is precisely the question that James asked in his letter to the early Christian community. If we believe God is a God who shows no favor or partiality, then why should we? Moreover, if we take serious the command to love our neighbors as ourselves, then we must do all we can to love those with whom we find it difficult to love 
and embrace. That's actually the hard part. To love those with whom we may not necessarily feel called to love. That's the gospel. James' letter is just as relevant to us Christians today as it was to the early Christians community. Perhaps even more so today. Given the extraordinary religious and political divisions we see and experience today. Our society has become so dangerously polarized that many are incapable of even listening to opposing viewpoints and sides. Tragically, much of this divisiveness and polarization has been made worse by some Christian leaders and their divisive polemic. Yet the church is called to another way, a way of love and communal discourse. As Jesus realized his mission is, was not just for one people, but for all, so too we are to understand our mission and ministry is for all God's people. That as a church we are to offer a generous hospitality, a lavish hospitality for all God's people, regardless of their particular identities. And we must listen to one another and hear the deep need that all of us have to be loved. Thus we come each week to the Eucharistic table to open the word and break bread. We come to this table from our various backgrounds and bring our lives and our stories and place them before the altar of God. We gather on this table to be nourished and fed and to learn from the source and author of our lives the way of love. Just as Jesus gave himself by his passion and death, so too are we to die to our selfish wants and needs and desires and to not just simply treat others as we want to be treated, but to love others with the same love that Jesus showed us a total, complete, and sacrificial love. Learning this new way of life will be difficult, and it will challenge us to live in new ways. I suspect it wasn't easy for Jesus as well. Let us not forget that he too, even up to the moment of his death, struggled with the demands of an all-expansive love. Yet he embraced his and lived the way of love, even to the point of death. Will we do the same? Will we love others, even those whom we find most difficult to love? with the same love that Christ has shown us. Amen.